Greetings, my name is Christopher Paisley, a Philadelphia public school teacher for Inside White Fragility. And today's question is, can teaching white fragility actually get you sued? Now, according to attorney Adam Mill, who wrote an article for The Federalist yesterday, it can, and there's a possibility that teaching white fragility, you know, in your school, in your business, somewhere, will eventually lead to lawsuits, discriminatory lawsuits. And here's what he says. Here's, I'm going to quote from the article. Legions of trainers holding up white fragility are indoctrinating government agencies, corporate workforces, and schools. People subjected to it may have good grounds for a lawsuit. HR departments should tread very carefully when selecting training in the current environment. If management pushes training that assigns collective guilt to any race, religion, sex, or ethnicity, and may constitute direct evidence of discriminatory intent in a later lawsuit claiming discrimination. Training based on the book White Fragility, if sponsored by decision makers as a mandatory expression of corporate culture, will likely be heavily relied upon by future plaintiffs who suspect they were denied promotions, bonuses, and other opportunities due to the color of their skin. Every American is entitled to equal treatment regardless of race. That is still the law at least for the time being. But rights have a way of disappearing if nobody speaks up. Now this isn't just true in management situations, it's also true in school settings. And it's interesting that he says um, these rights have a way of disappearing if nobody speaks up because actually uh, a few people did speak up and this just happened recently. In New York City, there was this big old brouhaha that started because Richard uh, Carranza the uh, superintendent for the New York City School District had decided he wanted to restructure the district. He came in and he wanted to restructure things. He really believed there was a white supremacy culture in the district. Um, he believed he had to reorganize the district. People were demoted. Some people were fired. Positions were moved around. Um, it, it, it was suggested he was doing this based on race. Um, but not only that, he started to implement this kind of um, controversial training similar to the Robin D'Angelo uh, kinds of training where he wanted to dismantle this white supremacy culture. So he held this, this training, and this was happening in May of 2019, and then it kind of spilled over into the following school year, into the fall of 2019. And the New York Post did a series. They did about 12 or more articles following this whole story, and some of this stuff was really <laughs> actually quite um, eye-opening. So we held this training, it was based in white supremacy culture, and it, and it was similar to the things that we saw from the African American Museum in the Smithsonian, where they were saying that white supremacy culture is perfectionism, it's hard work, it's, it's being polite, it's, it's having this strict, uh, rigid time schedule, and he wanted to kind of deconstruct this and say that these are white cultures and we need to try and, you know, open this stuff up so people aren't being um, kind of forced into a certain culture. So that was, that was kind of part of the premise of this. There was pushback. Teachers, administrators, especially parents were saying it was creating this toxic culture of anti-whiteness and they also said that it was uh, polarizing and it was not healthy, it was not unifying. So there was a story written, um, there was another headline in the New York Post It said schools chancellor Richard Car uh, Carranza accused of demoting administrators because they were white. Four teachers, four women teachers sued the district for being demoted and fired because they were white. And that litigation, um, I'm, I haven't read anything on it. I don't know if it's still pending or if it was settled out of court, but it was legit. I mean, it was, it was some serious stuff going on. Four different women sued, and it was big news. If you're going to judge somebody by the color of their skin, you're going to segregate them or demote them or promote them on the basis of the race. It would seem to me that it would violate federal anti-discrimination laws. It just seems like common sense. There was another story in the New York Post during these trainings in New York City where teachers were allegedly told to favor black students uh, in this racial equity training. They were told since black students are traditionally uh, more oppressed and have more challenges, teachers were supposed to give the majority of the resources or, or the bulk of the resources to children of color over whites. This was said. You can read the article. Okay, obviously that's discrimination based on race. Um, another blow up during this time, this was in May of 2019. Uh, one of these sponsored groups and one of these sponsored sessions, there was an Asian woman who was who was in on one of these community kind of uh, workshops that were using this racial identity stuff. And she kind of challenged and said she was Asian and her child was Asian. You know, what does that mean? 
for her in terms of her identity. And she was told, no, you're Asian, you're white, you still have privilege. You know, Asians are still white, you still have privilege. And she was offended by that. And there was a whole brouhaha about that. There's been some New York uh, Post columnists. Uh, Carol Markowitz had written a piece in November of 2019. She said, quit the racial demagoguery and start working for better schools, which is something that I've been saying. Put away the identity politics. Let's get back to, to, to things that just help kids learn across all the races, religions, gender, sexualities. Let's stop this, this identity politicking. It, it, it gets distracting. Racializing everything gets distracting. Obviously, there's need to address systemic inequalities. No one's saying there isn't, but when you overblow it, it definitely causes issues. And, and th this just goes on and on. I mean, I'll put some links to these articles. You can read them, but that's just a perfect example of how um, bringing this stuff into your school or into, into, you know, into a business is going to come with definitely some risk. Uh, so, th so the article written by Adam Mill, Teaching Robin D'Angelo's What Fragility Will Get You Sued, it it's legit. It's already gotten uh, school district sued. Not directly D'Angelo's, but the same principles associated with D'Angelo's teachings, where you're, you're, you're um, basically racializing everything, you're segregating by race, you're, you're demoting and promoting by race, and all this stuff. It, it's definitely gotten to the point where it's unhealthy, it's definitely got to the point where it's counterproductive, and hopefully in the future when schools do trainings, and they do try and work on equity and equality, which is definitely needed, they do so in a manner that's more unifying and holistic and based in classic multiculturalism where we can bond and we can kind of come together and learn to have equal representation rather than these workshops based on division and polarization. One other thing I'd like to say to the people who subscribe to this page and others who might be interested in talking about the, the, the issues at the heart of white fragility, I'm going to ask everybody to consider uh, subscribing to the companion blog to this YouTube channel. So this channel is called Inside White Fragility, and if you go to the main page on the YouTube channel, you look at the main banner, if you go to the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little link that says Inside White Fragility. If you click on that, it brings you to the companion webpage and blog. And not only are these videos on that blog, but there's a whole lot of other resources there, articles that I try and put up there, articles that I write. Okay. So if you would, please consider subscribing to the companion blog and also sharing this YouTube channel with your fellow citizens. Thank you.